Hello 40k fans and fellow philosophers to the transhumanity video. Now transhumanity is an article I wrote in the first of this series for Frontline Gaming on my Monday release articles. I wanted to get this video out. It's going to be released on the day that my normal written article goes up, but since I'm traveling for some unfortunate circumstances, I won't have the ability to get the article ready in time. So this is just going to be a reading of an older article. It talks about the topic of transhumanity, what that really means, what that means historically, the first time it was used, and how we can apply that to 40k and philosophy in general. So this is kind of a special present to all of you subscribers out there. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy the content of this video. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Why do we think about 40k? It is easy to get lost in what Warhammer 40k is on the surface. Eternal warfare, personal misery, tyranny, and a scale that at times defies even the concept of suspension of disbelief. These are all hallmarks of this universe that carved its very own dark niche into the science fiction genre. While it is a fun playground, as evidenced by all the toys, the 40k universe wouldn't be as interesting as it is if it didn't speak to something much deeper. The fact that it does speak to something deeper is evidenced by the hundreds of novels across multiple genres that simply wouldn't exist if enough people were not interested enough to justify the cost and effort to produce. So what is it that 40k offers to make us think and demand so much from it? That's what I'm hoping to explore. And we're going to start with the concept of being transhuman. Transhuman is a term often used in published 40k fiction to describe the ascended physical state achieved after regular humans survive the transformation into Adeptus Astartes, space marines. Posthuman is another term often applied to the genetically engineered super soldiers created by the Emperor of Mankind for his crusade across the galaxy. Both terms, of course, come with their own modern day baggage and definitions, but according to my perfunctory search, transhuman is considered the middle stage between who we are now and whatever the post-human stage of our evolution will be. As a brief summary, post-human as a concept encapsulates not only the physical changes that humanity as a species would undergo, such as a transference to a digital consciousness or the next stage of biological or artificial evolution, but also the moral and philosophical barrier we would need to cross to recognize and implement a higher way of being that manifests in both thought and behavior. To put it simply, we aren't going to be post-human until we transcend not only our physical limitations, but our moral and thinking limitations as well. So with this distinction in mind between transhuman and posthuman, let's talk a little bit about what the transhuman aspect of 40k is in relation to humans and space marines. Now, I found the conceptualization of the word transhuman by someone, and forgive me, I am terrible with French, but his name is Pierre Teilhard de Chardin in his book, The Future of Mankind, which was written shortly after the end of the Second World War. Now this was interesting. It's the first known usage of the term transhuman that I could track down. The quote is as follows. Liberty, that is to say, the chance offered to every man by removing obstacles and placing the appropriate means at his disposal of transhumanizing himself by developing his potentialities to the fullest extent. Now let's dig into this a little bit. This basically means that in order to ascend to a higher state of being, an individual must develop itself by making the most of its inherent physical and psychological potential. When it comes to removing obstacles, I understand this to say it is more a case for providing people with a means to overcome the obstacle than a simple removal of struggle, and that being the path to more advanced being. Mental strength training, much like physical, is successful when appropriately incremental increases of strain are put on the muscles involved in the training, not by removing weight and challenge. In that same vein, you want to remove obstacles that are insurmountable or arbitrary, much in the same way you would not start a weightlifter at the maximum weight and expect them to progress. 
Liberty and choice provide the greatest opportunities for individual growth when properly nurtured. It is then of particular note how the failure of the emperor in the fiction to provide liberty could be argued to result in the stunted potential of those who serve him, including, say, his Primarchs or the Space Marines. Now, the idea that de Chardin put forward here was later expanded into more of an ideological movement called transhumanism by thinkers who came about afterwards, but that philosophy won't factor too much into my discussion in these essays except perhaps to illustrate how far the depiction of our future in 40k tells us we will fall short of even the most optimistic ideals of an etho-rational standard. The evolution of this idea also signifies an interesting shift from transhumanism as humanity's purely biological advancement to a combination of higher biological and moral states of being. Now how does this apply to 40k? What does it mean to be transhuman in 40k? Is it just the physical reforging of flesh? Does the ascendance to Astartes replace the attributes of regular humans? I don't see much evidence for that. I would say the transformation magnifies human attributes and doesn't replace them. The scale of the problems they have to face is bigger, but they are the same problems that we as people have to deal with, like anger, depression, sacrifice, betrayal, greed, ambition, the list goes on. I also think that the Black Laborai authors know better than to waste the opportunity presented by the idea of transhuman super soldiers on a purely physical or literal representation. The act of becoming transhuman physically in 40k does not come automatically with the wholeness of fully developed being as such. The psychoconditioning and indoctrination, particularly pre-heresy, is obviously not a substitute for true mental development. From kindness to cruelty and from discipline to depravity, the idea of being beyond human is the great irony of the space brain experiment in both the mundane and figurative senses. What being transhuman in 40k means is that becoming a space marine just ends up making a person more human, not above human, or perhaps more fully concentrated or saturated with what is quintessential humanity. As a result, the elevation to transhuman means having more potential than a regular human while being shackled to all the same vices. The consequences of having an extra concentrated or bigger human experience while only being armed with a conditioned protopsyche on the back of a teenager's mental development are frightening to consider. This is evidenced by the multitude of flaws in character ev evinced by the Astartes. It is little wonder then that Chaos was so easily able to find a foothold in the minds of these Astartes, despite their psychoconditioning. If they did just come out from the transition to post-human with a fully developed psyche, fully individuated personas, then they wouldn't really fall victim to the vices that not only provide interesting literary subject matter for us to consume, but they also would be compelling. Indeed, if the inherent biological gifts of advanced thinking capacity from becoming transhuman inevitably led to the same moral conclusions, then there would have been no Horus heresy or even variation between the legions, because despite the small biological predilections designed into the different chapters, they were all ruled by the same human logical ethos, the imperial truth. And the failure of this ethos shows that these characters are not born or created without the same need for proper psychological development and individuation, making them ripe for corruption by the chaos ideology. It is the subsequent failure to properly individuate by the Astartes and their even more exaggerated Primarch parents that ultimately unravels the Emperor's dreams of a united and ordered galaxy, and thus it creates the great grimdark tragedy that captivates our imaginations. Now let's talk about uh, what I believe is a myth in 40k, the myth being that Astartes aren't human. So what, what does it mean then to be transhuman? What is transhumanity? Transhumanity is how Astartes represent not a post-human state of ascension, but a magnified exaggeration of humanity's physical and psychological extremes of potential. This potential is big enough to create a galaxy full of horrors when not developed properly despite being made to kill a galaxy full of horrors. 
This is also immediately identifiable and applicable to each of us as readers and consumers of this fiction. Perhaps one of the greatest lies that humans in 40k believe is that Astartes are no longer human. That sentiment is simply the unwillingness of humans to confront the extreme potentials of their own consciousnesses within this universe. This is true of us as readers as it is of humans of 40k. It is the naive manifestation of that all too common lie that we tell ourselves when we say, I would never do X. I would never support Y. Astartes are actually more human than the mortals they are stewards of. And if you know anything about humanity, then that idea is terrifying indeed, considering the extremes that we can go to. Now in the article, I have a link to a book called Ordinary Men. And to give you a kind of a brief idea of what this book is about, this book is a study of regular people during the Nazi regime. They are just your ordinary beat cops who were sent to assist with the occupation of Poland. Now, these people voluntarily went. They knew that it was going to be rough, that they were going to be required to do rough things. And the book catalogs their descent from just your regular neighborhood beat cop everyday Joe into the type of people who would take naked pregnant women out and shoot them in the back of the head in their own backyards. While I recommend that people read this book, it's, it's rough. I myself haven't been able to get through it all the way yet, but it is something that I'm, I'm working on doing because we all need to recognize the potential in ourselves to support something terrible and how it's an incremental little by little process. So that makes discussing what these stories in 40K represent a useful exercise because we are ultimately talking about human problems. The grimdark then becomes the space in which we conduct our what-if simulations about being. But we'll talk about that more in another video. If you found this interesting, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, you can check out my page, Captain Morgan's Librarius, on Facebook. This is the space where I test a lot of the ideas that I put in these videos in the first drafts. It's also where I have kind of a running live blog of my hobby projects different lore ideas, concepts, games played, though with the pandemic that's been a lot lighter than I would prefer. Either way, come check it out, and I'd love to talk to you either here in the comments or in private messages there. What do you think about transhumanity? Do you think that we can apply this concept of an enhanced physical being with an enhanced version of our mental or moral state of being? What would that look like? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.